Hello all, uh, welcome to the new video of signals and systems. In this video, we'll study about modes in waveguide. So, in the previous video, we discussed in detail about the derivation of waveguide equations, that is the field equations which exist inside the waveguide. Like uh, there'll uh, there'll be magnetic and electric fields fields which exist in the waveguide. So we we derived that through Maxwell equations, and also we found out the cutoff frequency of the waveguide, which was also derived uh, basically from Maxwell equations. So in that video, I had told that we'll discuss mode modes and waveguide in the next lecture. Okay, so we'll see that. So if you recall what happened in that video or uh, you can go and watch that video again before watching this you can see that at some point we found out what is the value of electric field in the z direction which is given by this equation okay since the field components are sinusoidally varying with time and also they are propagating in a particular direction okay so for this EZ we can also append e raised to j omega t and e raised to minus gamma z which denotes that the wave is sinusoidally varying with time that is the field components values are sinusoidally varying with time and also it is propagating in z direction that is for EZ okay so since we were dealing with TM waves in a waveguide so what is the minimum requirement for TM waves the value of HZ should be equal to 0 and EZ is not equal to 0 ok so there are three directions that is x y and z so there exist electric field and there exist magnetic field okay so for tm waves only hz is equal to 0 however the fields exist for x and y direction similarly uh, for TM waves EZ is not equal to 0 so EZ exists and so do EX and EY so these are all field components which exist in a waveguide we are dealing about rectangular waveguide okay so these fields exist in the waveguide and also you can see there are two terms m and n in this equation in the that is equation in all these fields so once we get the value of ez we can also derive the value of remaining field components that is ex ey hx and hy for tm waves okay so that derivation is tedious so let's not uh, discuss about that So for those who are interested in finding out the value um, in the to derive the other field equations through EZ you can go ahead. So you need to use Maxwell equations for that. So as you can see uh, M and N. So this M and N can take any values starting from 0 any integer values M and N. So it can take 0 0 or 0 1 1 0 and so on ok so based on this values there will be five different equations that is the equation will take different values depending upon the value of m and n ok so, uh, so in general we define it as tm into mn mode ok so depending upon the value of m and n 
we can call it as that particular mode for example if m is equal to 0 n equal to 1 then we call it as pm01 mode which means in all these equations we need to make sure that m is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 okay so that is the mode now since we are dealing with pm waves let's see what happens when pm takes the mode where m is equal to 0 and n equal to 0 so as you can see at that time if you substitute the value of m equal to 0 and n equal to 0 since we know only z here so let's uh, substitute the value there in that case sin 0 and this will also become 0 so hence z will is equal to 0 so once you derive all these equations and if you try to substitute the value of m and n in remaining equations that is ex, ey, hx, hy you can see that all these field equations will be 0 as well that means there will be no field which exists in the waveguide okay no field exists in the waveguide for the value of m equal to 0 and n equal to 0 so in short we say pm00 does not exist in the waveguide okay it does not exist in the waveguide so it cannot exist because there will be no fields the, all the field components will vanish when m equal to 0 and n equal to 0 so let's see what will happen when pm will take 0 and 1 that is n equal to 1 however m equal to 0 so again if you try substituting, uh, substituting that you can see that all the field components will vanish again for example ez will vanish because sin 0 this may not be equal to 0 but this will make sure that whole term is 0 so this will also does not exist in waveguide and next is pm11 so as you can see when m equal to 1 and n equal to 1 ez will exist okay and there will be few more fields which exist in the waveguide so we can safely say that the lowest pm mode that can exist in rectangular waveguide is pm11 so this is the lowest mode which can exist in the waveguide so mode is nothing but the values of m and n and the corresponding uh, we'll see whether the fields exist or not okay so that is uh, in shortly we call it as mode so we uh, now got to know what is the mode in waveguide now next thing is uh, we need to see what is another term called dominant mode which is used widely in waveguide context okay so for now we know that tm11 is the lowest mode which can exist and uh, the higher mode also will exist okay after this all other modes will exist that is tm21 tm12 and tm2122 etc okay all this will exist so now let's see so what is dominant mode in the waveguide I, uh, let me take the another so let's define what is dominant mode in waveguide so the definition says it is that mode for which lambda c that is cut off wavelength okay this is cut off wavelength achieves the highest value so uh, in the previous lecture we already uh, have seen the what is the cut off frequency that is fc now we need to find out what is lambda c and correspondingly uh, we need to find out 
for what values are of m and n this lambda c achieves the highest value so based on that we can tell which mode is the dominant mode okay so let's do that so we know the popular relation between frequency and wavelength and speed of light this is c is equal to fc into lambda c so lambda c will become c over fc so lambda c will become c upon fc is c by 2 square root of m by a whole square plus n by b whole square okay this c will vanish we get 2 times uh, sorry 2 upon square root of m by a whole square plus n by b whole square so you can simplify this term we get 2ab upon square root of m square b square plus n square a square so this is the expression for cut off wavelength in a waveguide now we need to find out for what values of m and n lambda c achieves the highest value so this is pretty much common sense now so we found out that tm11 is the lowest mode in the waveguide okay that is m equal to 0 n equal to 1 and all doesn't exist so this is the lowest mode which can exist in waveguide for any other higher modes that is this will become tm21 tm12 tm22 etc at that time what will happen for tm11 the expression will be 2ab upon square root of a square plus b square for any other mode this denominator will be will become greater which means the cut off wavelength become less so the highest value of cut off wavelength will be only for m equal to 1 and n equal to 1 so the dominant mode in waveguide as well as the lowest mode which can exist in waveguide is tm11 okay so there will be few questions uh, based on this dominant mode so you should be able to answer that and also remember which is the lowest mode which can exist in the waveguide for tm waves okay there is separate waves called te waves so the derivation and the conclusion of cutoff frequency that is the expression for cutoff frequency everything remains the same you just need to find out what is the dominant mode based on the observation like how we did with this okay so let's see uh, that i'll uh, i'll not do that so let it be like homework exercise for you to find out what is uh, how to derive all these terms cutoff frequency equations etc okay you can uh, refer my previous video for that so let me uh, let's see p briefly i will not explain in detail but just let's just uh, i'll i want to highlight some points in that okay so this is the table for just for comparison of for tm waves and te waves in a waveguide so as you can see the lowest mode which is possible for tm waves and waveguide is tm11 whereas for uh, transverse electric waves in a waveguide the lowest mode is t01 and higher also the dominant mode is tm11 which we just found out here and in the same manner you can find out the for te the dominant mode is t10 and not t01 because uh, the value of a is greater than b okay and then the dominant mode wavelength that is for m equal to 1 n equal to 1 the corresponding uh, wavelength expression will be 2ab upon square root of a square plus b square and for te waves the cutoff wavelength will be 2 times a so if we compare tm and te lambda c is lambda c for te mode is greater than lambda c for tm 
okay so this is more dominant more dominant mode so if anywhere you encounter a question which says dominant mode in a waveguide i uh, and if the question does not explicitly mention whether it is talking about tm waves or t waves you can safely assume that they are referring to te10 because this is the most dominant mode in a waveguide if you compare transverse magnetic waves or transverse electric waves because for this value of m and n that is m equal to 1 and n equal to 0 the cut off wavelength will be much higher no other modes can produce this wavelength inside the waveguide other than this mode that is te10 so you can presume that the dominant mode means te10 this is the dominant mode in general for a waveguide if they are talking about tm waves particularly then it will be tm11 so you can answer many questions based on what we discussed today so if you have any comments uh, questions please use the comment section and also those who are interested in finding out the other or uh, like how to derive the other field equations from ez in a tm mode which we were discussing uh, you can send me a mail uh, hopefully if i have a free time i will post the derivation on the website okay so thanks for watching the video guys uh please subscribe and also tell your friends so this will help you for the preparation of uh, normal engineering exams and also if you are interested in cracking gate examination you can um, watch these videos okay we try to produce um, like uh we try to give more content i mean okay so thank you very much